As they say, no rest for the wicked. Or our tame gun club member Stephen Dunbar. It's a fresh early morning start on a bank holiday weekend and he has been called out to sort out a cunning lamb snatcher or two. Left or right? Right. I shall have him yet. Yeah, stopped. Put in the gap. Right! They don't know for a second. Move him right from behind the scout. Yeah. You see him over top of it. Gonna come clear over the gorse. No. Just behind this gap. Slipping back to the shot plate. He's not quite sure where he came out of. There he is. In clear. Bingo. <laughs> Looks a good sized dog. Bit of, bit of camera pressure on the first shot? Of course. I, I, I wouldn't be used to this hour the morning. No, we were lucky there. We've come out here this morning. Farmer has been having a bit of pressure with a fox attacking young lamb, so much so that he has taken him off the hill and brought him way back down the valley. I spent a bit of time glassing with the binoculars when we came up. Never seen anything. At least if nothing else, we come up and take a look at the hares. One of them actually came in to say hello in the gate. Walked around the corner and we had this guy coming down along the hedge. I thought he'd come in with us, but he actually went through and went out into a second field. Now, 300 yards on the first shot, I, I know I've gone over him. I think I actually put on too much elevation, but with the mud being so quiet, he wasn't quite sure where he came out. We spent a lot of time looking around. So I took off all elevation, and when he stepped out and eventually came clear, another shout stopped him. Just held slightly on the top of his shoulder, top of his shoulder. And as you can see, the result we have up in the field here. Jason can't say too much about that now. Yeah. 300 yards off sticks, so I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna <laughs> give you too much stick about Nah, well, I deserve it, I deserve it. I'd put it down to a cold bar shot. <laughs> I'd say it's book fever, you wouldn't be used to shooting foxes. No, Jez, the, the Asher, what, when will I have last seen one? <laughs> we go up and get a look. We will, I, I'm putting my bets on it's a good dog fox now. He's a big hefty lump of guy, lovely white tip on him. 
There's no such thing for a lion mm. for you on a Saturday. Bank holiday weekend and all, huh? No, this will be fairly typical this time of year. We'll soon be getting pens ready for pheasant poles. This will be an area now just back down one field below us, one of the, the club that I'm in. We have a release pen. We'll have possibly a hundred poles in that in a couple of weeks time. And I say, yeah, like, whatever about anything else, like you have your wild birds in the area and that, but poles are going to be very stupid when they go out. Like they've been in a pen from six weeks till 12, 14 weeks old, they come out. So any, anything you can tidy up in that time before they go out is a big help because basically, yeah, they're going to be wild enough to people. But foxes, they just mop them up for sports, they do it. Especially if you happen to have a vixen that's rearing cubs, it's great training for cubs. They'll, they'll cut their stick on them very quick. Tidying them up, as I said. Tom here, this time of year you're going to have guys Dogs and vixens will cause mischief this time of year, they're going to be feeding. So, you'll have hens, ducks, lambs. Tom was getting so much problems here, he had to bring him back down the valley. We will be going down because he said he had seen one down the further as well. Like he's a good, a good mile. Territories don't tend to be very big around here, but as Jason said for lions, they don't come into it this time of year. You get a call, you're in a club, you have to look after your landowners. It's just by their good grace that you're in any given area. We'll see how far am I, am I guess, of a dog. It's actually smaller than I thought. Beautiful dark little fox. And it is a dog actually. Very nice one. Beautiful dark. Lovely white hip. Young fella too. Still an adult. This guy would have been capable of taking lambs. Young lambs, weak lambs, it's generally what happens when guys lose them, it's, it's twins that go missing. Newborn twins, they probably would have yeaned out overnight or early the day before. And you know, she's quite capable of defending one, but if one happens to stray water away from uh, the first lamb and, and the mother, yes, they're able to slip in and go, but a lamb two, three days old, they're, they're very easy pickings. You, you pick them up yourself, like just walking along the ditch. A fox that's out, out to hunt, he would, even vixen smarter than him, if they're desperate, they will take him. They won't wipe the place out, but it's enough if you lose three or four lambs, you're eating into profits of some amount. Some guys have tight enough margins, especially if they haven't got an awful lot of sheep. Like, some guys could lose 20 lambs in the year and, and hardly miss them. They wouldn't even tell you they were missing those numbers. Some smaller farmers lose two or three and yeah, they've, they've, it, it's hit them in the pocket. So, as I said, I'm not sure just how many Tom has lost here, but it was enough to warrant him taking him off the ground that he had him on to bring him further back down closer to the yard where he reckons he can keep a better eye on him. Six inches from top of the back to bottom of the chest. Your finger, your finger would span him. He's not an overly big target, but second one caught him just nicely on, right on the shoulder. And there was no point you thinking trying to call him? If I see him now, I, I'll take him. That's my motto. He was on a mission. He was moving, he was going somewhere at speed. He, he'd left like, from the time we seen him to coming out, he had his mind made up, he was going somewhere. We weren't, we had no great cover. My plan when I seen him was to try to get to the bushes just that were in front of us and give a call there where we had a little bit of something to break our silhouette. And hopefully he was up that little bit of a valley on the field and get him to come down to us. But he came into the next field and was well on for going for the third field. I said, no, cut my stick now. I'd been confident in making the shot first time round. I didn't. I was only just look that he went back that way and was silly enough to wonder where the hell had that come out of. But second one was on the money, all right. Second one was, I'm happy with that. So in, in these sort of places or in this sort of circumstance, you just kind of recognise that Carl isn't going to pull that lad and it's just a case of trying to make the most of the situation and, and take a longer shot? 
if I'd have been, take that, if he'd have been hunting, as in moving around, smelling, looking at ditches, I'd have said, possibly there's a good chance he'll call. Like he, he was looking for grub if they were hunting. The lad like him, it's like he's had a full belly. I said, right, sun is in the sky. I ain't going back. I ain't heading on about my business. Like there, as you see when we came in the field, there was rabbits, there was hares. If he was in hunting mode, he would have been checking around those and smelling those. He just came down one hedge, skipped across the second and moved on. As Jason said, in that situation, if I'd have seen him and looked like he was hunting and smelling and taking around, like first of all, I'd have tried getting closer. There's no use calling him if you don't have to. It's another trick you have for a later stage. If, if I can stalk in on a fox in the daylight and shoot him without calling, I'll try to do that. Because if you call straight off the bat and you spook him and he's gone, it's very unlikely you'd get him to respond to a call the next time. Well, not that particular call that you use. And as I tend to use the same one all the time, I'd rather not use it unless there's nothing else happening. You can see for the badgers, during the night the badgers have been grubbing around the dock leaves for leather jackets. So much for the sunny southeast. Mail bank holiday weekend and we've got feckin' snow. <laughs> Through sleet and sunshine, even on the same day, Stephen's enthusiasm never wanes, and nor does his list of chores and responsibilities. It's not just foxes that are a problem when it's lambing season. Well, we're here now, we've, we've finished at the foxes. I have a couple of larson traps set around different areas within the club grounds. Um, the landowner here, stud farm, but she's very fond of her little songbirds around the bird tables. The magpies are starting to take over, and she noticed that the Songbirds were dropping in numbers. She just asked me to bring over a larson trap. I have it set here. I only have it here two days. First morning, the grey crow and a magpie in it. It's early morning. I'm just, I can see the trap from here, there's nothing in it, so I'm just going to give the cowbird a drop of food and water. Leave him for the rest. I'll actually move it closer to the bog and uh, I'll check it later on again this evening. When we're finished here, I'm heading to another sheep farm. He was having lamb with eyes picked and tongues took out with grey crows. So I have two catchers over there and we'll check that. Give them a bit of grub and a drop of water and before leaving them to do the job and check them again in the evening. And as I pull in, I can see a lot of crows gone off. Grey crows, they're actually sitting on the pylon over it here. And what I'm reckoning has happened during the night, the foxes had to trap a visit and sprung all the doors. Like there was 10, 12 crows got off it here. And I'd say a fox has sprung the doors on the trap. And that's why they couldn't get in. But we'll find out when I get over here for a look. But my guess is a fox was trying to get in at the, the rabbits that had been feeding them. So we'll just take a whiz over and find because there actually was a couple of foxes on this last night when I came up to set the traps. They were wandering around. You can see more hoodies going away from it there. The boys we were shooting last month. Yeah, a bit of a close up there in personal, but as you can see, they're a fairly substantial bird. That one there now is a fair lovely boy. The hardware on them. Lamb is a soft little target for those when they decide to take. Actually, for this guy, he's getting a slight reprieve. I've been asked to get a call bird for a ladder trap, and hey, you boy, you. if you're not quick enough. They'll do things like that here. Come here, you. <laughs> and when you keep them in a trap like this, they survive fine just eating rabbits and drinking water? Rabbits, dog nuts, keep lots of food, lots of water. They'll do the whole summer long. Unless they get very, very stressed. Sometimes you will get foxes coming around the cages trying to dig in. 
that even badgers will try to dig in but uh, something like that will put them under a bit of stress but it's not unusual to go from March right through to September with the same call board. Once you keep them fed watered, look after them, they don't get an unexpected spell of bad weather. It's not unusual to keep them for a couple of months. With these jobs being done by people like Stephen, the farmers can sleep safely at night. But Stephen will still have to get up early 